Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise today to offer my amendment that utilizes the Holman Rule to reduce the salary of Sean Kelly, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness. That salary shall be reduced to $1. Like many of Biden's bureaucrats, Mr. Skelly is failing at his job and the basic responsibilities. On his watch, the Army missed their recruiting goal by 15,000 soldiers last year, and all other branches were forced to dig deep into their pools of delayed entry applicants to meet their recruitment goals. Mr. Skelly has also been with the Biden administration since the beginning and was appointed to the transition team. Some irony there. In November of 2020, as the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, Mr. Skelly played an instrumental role in the disastrous and shameful withdrawal from Afghanistan that killed 13 of America's finest, 13 American heroes. This embarrassing surrender to the Taliban. As DOD's highest ranking trans official, this delusional man thinking he is a woman, embodies and espouses the wokeism that causes, that's causing significant harm to our military readiness and troop morale. You just listened to a despicable speech from Congresswoman and public handjob giver Lauren Boebert, where she purposefully misgendered a Biden administration official repeatedly and recommended that her salary be reduced to one dollar in part because she's trans but mostly because she's trans it is one of the most disgusting vile and explicitly bigoted speeches that we've seen in this era but it's totally on brand for bumbling bobo now thankfully her colleagues in congress did not let that slide and betty mccollum objected to the amendment that she proposed and also said this in response i rise in the strongest opposition to this amendment and people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect when being addressed. Assistant Secretary Skelly has served in her role admirably, as she has done as her time as a naval officer. Assistant Secretary Skelly is a naval fighter, uh, uh, naval for over 20 years. And, I, you know, I, I, I am a little upset because the, the, the lack of respect that has been shown to Secretary uh, Kelly by the last speaker is surprising for me on this House floor, which we hold in such such high esteem. A naval flight officer for 20 years, including time spent in the Pacific. While we're all important how important this region is right now, there's absolutely no basis for this amendment. The colleague who offers this amendment provides no real substantive reason why Assistant Secretary Kelly should have her salary reduced. There's only one reason why Assistant Secretary uh, Kelly is being targeted is because she is simply a woman. I have fought long and hard with many women before me and with our allies for pay equity. We still have a long way to go but I'm never going to vote to reduce a woman's salary. I urge my colleagues to vote no, and I reserve the balance of my time. I think that was a great response. Short, sweet, to the point. You know, she condemned the transphobia, but also the misogyny, because what Boebert said there was indeed misogynistic. She didn't just target somebody because she's trans. She targeted a woman, right? Now, Boebert responded and not only doubled down on the transphobia, but she actually ramped it up exponentially. And that led to a back and forth between her and McCollum. But as you're going to see, McCollum not only got the last word, but she threw in a really good jab at Boebert towards the end. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess delusion runs deep in the Democrat Party. Um, I would... Uh I would go on the record to say that um, science is a friend in this case, and um, sure, if you want to call Mr. Skelly a her, his chromosomes are still XY, and um, we trust the science over here rather than delusion and playing dress up and imaginary uh, games with our military readiness. Our military needs to be lethal and able to defend our national security, not pander 
to the woke extremist left and make up fairy tales. Mr. Chair, I reserve. The gentlelady reserves. The gentlelady from Minnesota is recognized. Mr. Chair, when it comes to service of our country, there's a couple of things we ask from people. To take a loyalty oath, they do that. To, pay, to, to pass basic uh, training and to be up and fit for the job that, that they're, they're called upon to do, they do that. Secretary Skelly qualifies in all those areas. And as far as uh, the, uh, the conversation that my colleague is having, I'm not going to engage in hateful rhetoric, uh, Mr. Chair. Instead, I want to focus on the admirable service that our transgender, gay, bisexual members do in an all-voluntary army. They volunteer to put their lives on the line. They deserve the dignity and respect this House can give them. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlelady from Colorado is recognized. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want the record to reflect that there's nothing hateful about truth. And uh, again, I do urge my colleagues to support my amendment to restore the focus of our Department of Defense to defend our nation. Uh, and uh, so I, I look forward to um, this Holman rule being utilized to reduce the salary of Secretary Sean uh, Skelly, uh, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness to one dollar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield. The gentlelady yields back. The gentlelady from Minnesota is recognized. Well, I'm, I'm uh, just baffled here that we can pick and choose what, what's science, what's not science, what is human rights and dignity and respect, and what is not human rights and dignity and respect. And I look forward to having the discussion on climate change based on science with the gentlewoman from Colorado at some point in time. And with that, Mr. Speaker, at this point, I thank all our servicemen and women for their service, their families that serve alongside of them, and I yield back. Wow, that last line was absolutely perfect. Republicans like Lauren Boebert and also Marjorie Green, to be fair, they tell you that you should trust the science when it comes to issues related to sex and gender, but they only invoke the science to promote transphobia. But in actuality, they don't care about science when it comes to climate science or the science regarding vaccines. All of a sudden, they're not so confident in the science. All of a sudden, the trust in science goes out the window. And unfortunately for Lauren Boebert, scientists also don't agree with her on this issue. Neither do psychologists or sociologists or anthropologists or anyone that can acknowledge the basic fact that trans people have always existed and they will continue to exist and thus deserve our respect. But what happened next is even more despicable because Bobo's transphobic amendment was actually adopted by a voice vote, although McCollum was not done fighting. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Colorado. All in those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have with the amendment is agreed to. Mr. Mr. Chair. The gentlelady from Minnesota is recognized. I would like to request the roll call vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Colorado will be postponed. Yeah, so that's the party in control of the House of Representatives. And these idiots have the power to shut down the entire government and probably will do that in the coming days. And if Boebert's behavior alone wasn't embarrassing enough, her and Marjorie Greene were both trying to one-up each other all throughout the day. So Marjorie Greene introduced a similar amendment where she reduced Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's salary down to $1 as well. And guess what? That actually passed by a voice vote too. I wonder why she chose to target him in particular. Hmm, if Boebert is targeting somebody because they're trans, then maybe Marjorie's targeting some, no, it couldn't be, couldn't be. Marjorie Greene racist? Inconceivable. I just, I can't handle how idiotic our government is, right? And mind you, that if these imbeciles actually do manage to shut down the government, ironically, they're still going to be paid while thousands of federal employees are going to be furloughed. And yet they're going to shut down the government, still be paid while trying to simultaneously cut other official salary to $1. 
It's just, it's too much. But I do want to get back to Boebert because this is not the first time, believe it or not, that she has specifically targeted Secretary Skelly. As Ross Story explains, this is actually the second time in two months that Boebert introduced an amendment to a government spending bill that would reduce the salary of Sean Skelly, the highest ranking transgender official serving in the Defense Department under the Holman Rule, allowing lawmakers to target specific federal employees for salary cuts or firing. And again, she is targeting this woman specifically because she's trans. That's it. It's discrimination in its purest form. And she can try to justify it by saying that Skelly isn't doing her job adequately because recruitment numbers are down. But I mean, we all know what this is really about. The cruelty is the point. She wants to embarrass and humiliate her because she's trans. She wouldn't know about Skelly if Skelly wasn't trans. Neither would most Americans, but she's trying to put a spotlight on this person so that way they receive hate and harassment and abuse. And we've reached the point where transphobic bigots have become so goddamn deranged that their bigotry has actually managed to transcend transphobia, and it's to the point where they're just being misogynistic now, too. For example, Piers Morgan talked to people who are seriously, with a straight face, claiming that trans women have an advantage when it comes to fucking fishing. Yeah. His angling team have refused to compete in this year's World Championships. The decision comes after a trans woman, Becky Lee Burtwistle Hodges, a former male rugby player, was picked for the team. Well, England's Angling Trust, the governing body, says trans women have no advantage over biological women. Many of England's star female anglers, however, vehemently disagree. And here to explain, after the captain of the England ladies' angling team, Heather Linfield and Wendy Metcalf, a former England ladies angling star who's described by North New Norfolk News as a leading figure in the sport. So welcome to both of you. Uh, all right, let me start with you, Heather, if I may. There's a, a kind of belief from the governing bodies here that being a biological male would have no impact on the sport of angling. Is that right? That's what they're saying. And it, it's not true. I'm sorry, but I can't. They have to fucking stop. This is getting so ridiculous. Like, it feels like I'm watching a parody here. Like, what's happening? They are literally being misogynistic just to exclude trans women. Pure and simple. And they also did this in chess recently as well. The top chess federation ruled that trans women are not allowed to compete against cis women unless they show relevant proof. Because I guess the tiny femoid brain is inherently inferior to the large and superior male brain. I mean, I'm obviously being facetious, but how long until one of them makes that exact point unironically? Like, that's where we're at. That's where we're at with the discourse. It's ridiculous. They go out of their way to overly infantilize all women and make it seem as if they're completely incompetent, weak rubes, all so they can exclude trans women from every single aspect of society. It's just so ridiculous. Sure, these, uh, these feminists here might be making women look bad, but uh, at least trans women are getting fucked over the most, so who cares? But, I mean, this goes back to the point about Cruelty and cruelty being the main purpose, right? There's no logic or reason to these arguments that they're making. They're just being cruel for cruelty's sake. Any trans person with a modicum of success will be endlessly bullied because their visibility is the threat to these bigots because that visibility promotes the dangerous idea that trans people are people and like all other human beings, some of them achieve success, right? And these bigots are so craven that they're even going after teenagers. So on September 18th, the stochastic terrorist hate account known as Libs of TikTok attacked a 17 year old child who was crowned homecoming queen of her Missouri high school. And on top of that, transphobic grifter Riley Gaines, who tied with Leah Thomas for fifth place, also attacked the teenager, sarcastically calling her stunning and brave. Not to mention the headlines from right-wing outlets like this, which misgender her, did not help. And I say it didn't help because, expectedly, after this, the response was hate. Lots and lots of hate. She was bombarded by hate. Again, the 17-year-old was bombarded by hate by a bunch of people online 
who don't even know her because all of her friends and family were really happy for her. The student body voted for her, but yet everyone else online had a lot to say about her. The Kansas City Star explains, it was one of the most gratifying moments of her young life. Then, by the next morning, the ugliness hit. Not much from the Kansas City area, as far as she could tell, or at all from her schoolmates, but from across the country in a deluge of social media malignancy on Facebook, Instagram, on X, formerly known as Twitter. Her sister, Francesca, 20, named Oak Park's homecoming queen in 2020, called from Boston, where she attends college, asking if Tristan was all right. She had been reading the barrage of hostility. She was worried about Tristan being safe, said Sherry Young, the young woman's mother. The comment that has stuck with me, Tristan said, was that I should have been dragged off the field by my hair and beaten up. How the world came to know that Tristan is trans is still a mystery to her, she said. No one announced it. The North Kansas City School District didn't mention it in its congratulatory notice. Tristan isn't even the school's first transgender homecoming queen. In 2015, senior Landon Patterson was named, leading to a protest outside the school. So just to reiterate, these adults online, people like Riley Gaines, the writer at Breitbart, libs of TikTok's Chaya Raichik, they didn't just target this person and direct hate and harassment towards her, target this child, to be clear. They also outed her because, again, as the article states, the school did not say that she was trans. The student body voted for her, but a bunch of transphobic adults online decided to direct hate towards her and make this teenager's life a living hell, as if it's not already hard enough to be a teenager in America, especially if you're trans. I mean, it is genuinely deranged, and as transphobic bigots become more craven and try to demonize any and every trans person for simply existing, let me tell you this. They're only making themselves look bad. Not the trans person. They look bad. Going after children, that makes you look like the asshole, not the trans child, right? But when you're in a position of power and authority like Lauren Boebert, going back to her, that's where you can do the most damage, not just with regard to the policies that you can push, but with the agenda that you're able to set with that massive amount of power and with your platform. But even though her in-your-face transphobia is super difficult to stomach, I do think that Lauren Boebert and these people who go after teenagers, all of these things that they're doing, it's going to backfire because most Americans, they're not explicitly transphobic. I think that most people are mildly supportive of trans people are just genuinely ignorant because they don't know anyone who's trans. But this type of vitriol at a level this high, it's going to turn off the normies. And not only that, it's going to galvanize trans people and people with trans friends and family. So when people do this, when they are that loud with their hate, they're not doing themselves any favors. In fact, I'd argue that they're making matters worse. They're their own worst enemies. And even though their hate is ugly and I hate that trans people have to endure it, trust me, they're speeding up our fight for equality because I don't think that anyone who is a reasonable person can look at that speech or look at what people online are doing to a teenager and say, yeah, I'm on that side. I'm with them. No, it's just it's just too in your face and how immoral and deranged it is. So these transphobes are not helping themselves, thankfully. And the faster that they are delegitimized, the better off all people will be. Because we are not equal until trans people are equal and treated with respect as well. And I'll leave that there. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay, Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay